Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine. So today I'm here to talk to you about the Gigabyte B650E Aorus Master. So this is the first B650E motherboard that I have reviewed and I have to tell you that I am more than impressed by what Gigabyte has put together here. Now when I first got this motherboard and in fact even up to Monday I had no idea how much this motherboard cost. Now Thursday, Friday or whatever day this comes out on we have an actual price for the motherboard and it's not cheap at around 9,700 Rand, which is a lot of money to spend on a B650E motherboard. Again, I have to put to you that it is an Aorus Master. So by definition, that makes it high end, meaning you are going to get every single one of the high end features you are used to getting on an Aorus board or an Aorus Master rather, but it just so happens to be on a B650E chipset. But before we get into any of that, let's just talk about what makes this a high-end motherboard. Number one, it comes with a PWM or rather a power phase design that is 16 plus 2 plus 2. So it's 16 phases for the V-Core, two phases for the SoC and IGP, and another two phases for I have no idea. I think at some point or in some documentation, Gigabyte wrote miscellaneous or PCI Express. I'm really not sure what the other two phases are for. However, what is important to know is that the first 16 phases are actually just for the V core and they are configured in an 8 plus 8 configuration. Now, these phases, unlike the other two, are 105 amp power stages. All of that has to come together to just mean to you that you can basically power any CPU on this motherboard that is appropriate for the socket. Now, another thing that makes this a high end board, this is Purely my suspicion, I have no confirmation on this, but I suspect this is an 8-layer PCB board. And the reason I say that is because it also has some of the highest DDR5 overclocking that I have seen to date on an AMD platform. The only other AM5 experience that I have is with an X670 board, and that one was only rated to do 6400, that is DDR5 6400, while this one is rated for everything up to DDR5 6600. There's another thing that makes this a high-end motherboard, and that is the Gen 5 M.2 socket layout and connectivity. So all of the M.2 sockets on this motherboard actually come from the CPU. None are coming from the PCH, meaning all of them are Gen 5 M.2 sockets. There's four in total, but the last two actually share bandwidth with the graphics card PCI Express lanes, meaning should you so choose to populate all four M.2 sockets, then you would drop down your link speed for your GPU to X8. Now, talking further about the M.2 sockets, there's a really nice installation method that Gigabyte has used here. You just clip the SSD on and you clip it out. So it's very easy and I think it's probably the best that I've seen. Now, let's move on to another part that I think makes this a high-end board. Maybe this is more a mid-range audio solution, but it is something that is worthwhile if you consider that the audio setup on this B650E Aorus Master is one that's powered by the ALC1220 VB, I think. That's the codec of choice. But the more important thing here is that the DAC is the ESS, I think it's the Sabre 9118 DAC. And with that, you also get Wima audio capacitors. Now, this entire audio solution is then backed up by a software license or support for DTS as well, something that you don't get on most low-end or even mid-range boards. So good for Gigabyte for going all the way out and making sure that this motherboard actually does support those sorts of audio technologies. The only downside of this is that on the rear I.O., you'll actually notice that there are only two stereo mini jack outputs this isn't necessarily an issue but if you are using an analog 5.1 setup you'll find that for you to be able to plug in all your speakers for all your channels you are going to have to resort to the front panel audio connector because you need at least three outputs to get 5.1 working moving on from the audio i want to talk to you about the rear io since we are there already so you have four ports that are usb 2 480 megabits per second and then you have another four ports that are 5 gigabits per second then you have another four ports that are 10 gigabits per second and finally you have one usb type c port that is 10 gigabits per second as well it is unfortunate that you don't get thunderbolt or usb 4 however if you do need that sort of functionality there is a thunderbolt header on the motherboard itself 
So another thing that Gigabyte has done really well here is just the sheer amount of fan headers they have on this board. This time on the B650E Aorus Master, you actually have 10 PWM slash DC fan headers. 10. That is a lot and it's definitely the most I have seen on any Gigabyte motherboard to date. So once again, good going for Gigabyte for giving people that option to connect and control that many fans directly from the motherboard. Now, talking about control of fans and so forth, and in fact, even the RGB component of this motherboard, I was not able to configure any of this stuff outside of using the BIOS. Reason being, there was simply no Gigabyte software on the website when I visited it. I think the companion software for this motherboard is supposed to be the Gigabyte Control Center, but I couldn't download it anywhere. So I was literally limited to just controlling RGB and the fans using the BIOS. By the time this review comes out, I think the control center should be around. And I do hope that the control center is significantly better than what Gigabyte brought us before. So let's talk about what else makes this a high-end motherboard. Again, we're going to talk about the onboard features. You have the postcode LED, you have the power button, and you also have one configurable button it's right at the bottom of the motherboard so this one is like a flex key button if you will so it allows you to either configure it to turn off or on all the rgbs instantly you can use it or rather set it to boot you straight into the bios or you can have it configured as safe boot i think if you are going to be overclocking tweaking memory and so forth you will appreciate it being set to safe boot because it's the equivalent of a mem okay from asus that sort of thing right now all of those things come together to make this an actual premium motherboard but nothing says premium more than the actual build quality what it feels like in your hand and what it actually looks like because when you've plugged everything in i'm happy to say that this is by far the best looking gigabyte board i've come across it may seem like odd. Like why would you say this B650E Aorus Master is the one? It is. When it's installed in the case and running, I think it looks sublime. I'm hoping that the video that you're seeing right now illustrates some of this to you. If it doesn't, my apologies, but it really does look the part. I just love the way that the RGB has been implemented here. It is nuanced, it is subtle, but it's also so elegant. Just the RGB lighting on the Aorus logo is brilliant. And just that alone has moved me more than any other Gigabyte board has to date. Overall, what do I think of this motherboard? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. In, in fact, the thing that impresses me the most is actually what was in the BIOS. Talking about BIOS, in fact, the BIOS hasn't been improved much, but it is easier. It is simpler. It just looks better. You know, it just functions better than it ever has before. And I'm really happy for the first time that Gigabyte is at this stage in terms of their BIOS development. It's not perfect. There are things that are missing, like memory profiles, which I'll speak to. But overall, for what it's been in the previous years, this is probably the best it's ever been. And I do appreciate that. Now, talking about the more specifically the memory, you'll notice that there are some settings that are missing from the memory tuning options on this motherboard or this BIOS at least. I have no idea why Gigabyte did not include these for some reason. However, I do suspect that it might be related to two other settings that Gigabyte has included on this motherboard. And those are the low latency mode and high bandwidth mode. So both of these settings, you either toggle them from disabled to enabled or auto. Essentially what they do is how they are described. Low latency mode improves latency and the high bandwidth mode literally improves bandwidth. Enabling both of these settings at 6200 CL30 allowed me to get higher bandwidth figures than I did on a competing motherboard, an X670 board at 6400 CL32. So they obviously are working and I did get my best super high performance from enabling these two settings along with the traditional settings that I could tighten myself. Given where I am right now uh, in terms of how I relate to DRAM components in general, I'm pretty much okay with this. The settings that I need to change, I was able to change. And the other ones, I was just able to flick on these two switches and I got the bandwidth boost that I needed. In fact, even when I was trying DDR5-6600, 
I managed to keep these two settings on. Actually, when I turned them off, I couldn't even get the memory to post. So they were helping me get the memory to post. In terms of what is the usable overclocking frequency for DRAM or the best that I found, the sweet spot, it was CL306200. And as a result, all the benchmarks were done, the overclocked benchmarks at least, were done with uh, 6200 CL30. That does not mean I was not able to run 6400. In fact, I was, but I simply chose CL30, 3200 because it just has better latency and better bandwidth than doing 6400 CL32. So yeah, that is essentially it for the B650E Aorus Master. Am I still impressed with the motherboard despite the high pricing? Yes, definitely. I would not change any perspective I have on this motherboard based purely on the pricing. However, I am a real person living in the real world and I am aware of the situation that many of us are facing, whether in South Africa, in, in Europe or elsewhere where things are just a lot more expensive and our exchange rate is not favorable to the US dollar. So this is an expensive motherboard. It costs more than several X670 boards. So in light of that, would I recommend this motherboard? Definitely. Would I recommend it at this price? I'm going to leave that up to you. I still feel that it's an excessive amount of money to pay for a B650E motherboard. But given the features that it has, connectivity, what it looks like, build quality and so forth, I have to say it is a high-end board. And if you look at it just as a high-end board, forget that it's a B650 board, then it definitely is worth the money. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this motherboard. Would you buy a 10K almost 10k board that's based on b650 or would you rather look for something else until next time remember to share like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the flip side so take care of yourselves and peace